Hello everyone, this is Dr. Adel Bondok, Professor of Anatomy and Neuroscience, Mansoura University, Egypt. Uh, today I will talk about the anatomy of the urinary bladder and the urethra. So I will start by the urinary bladder. I will talk about the position in the adult and in the children. I will talk about the shape, which is pyramidal. Okay. And then the peritoneal covering in males and the females, and also the relations, and the trigon, and the arterial supply of the urinary bladder. Start by the position and the shape of the urinary bladder. This is the urinary bladder. Okay, this is the urinary bladder. So, okay, position and the shape. The position of the urinary bladder in the adult and in the children. In the adult, if it is empty, it lies in the anterior part of the pelvis. If it is distended, it will expand to lie behind the anterior abdominal wall. Okay, in the children, it is abdominal organ due to the small size of the pelvis. Okay, then the shape is pyramidal. Pyramidal, it has apex, which is anterior angle. This is the apex, this is the apex. It has a base, okay? This is the base of the pyramid. It has neck, which is the inferior angle. This is the neck of the urinary bladder. And it has three surfaces. Okay, two posterior superior angles for the entrance of the ureter and three surfaces, upper surface and the two inferior lateral surfaces. So the urinary bladder is pyramidal in shape. It has apex, anterior angle. It has base, okay? It has neck, it is the inferior angle. It has two posterior superior angles for the entrance of the ureter. And it has three surfaces, upper surface and two inferior lateral surfaces. Regarding the peritoneal covering of the urinary bladder, in the male and in the female. In the male, the upper surface and the upper part of the base of the urinary bladder. It is separated, this upper part of the base is separated from the rectum by the rectovesical pouch, this pouch. In the female, it's covered only on the upper surface. The upper surface is only covered with peritoneum and it is separated from the uterus by the uterovesical pouch. So peritoneal covering in the male, upper surface, and the upper part of the base in the female upper surface only. Then the relations of the urinary bladder in the male. This is the male urinary bladder. So we'll start by the apex. This is the apex. The apex lies behind the upper border of the pubic symphysis. It is connected with the umbilicus by the median umbilical ligament, which is the obliterated uracus. Then the base. The base, the upper part of the base, is related to the rectovesical pouch, separating the upper part of the base from the rectum, and the lower part of the base is related to the seminal vesicles and the vast difference, separating the base of the urinary bladder from the rectum. So the base of the urinary bladder is related to upper part, rectovesical pouch, lower part, seminal vesicles, and the vast difference. Then the neck of the urinary bladder. The neck of the urinary bladder rests on the prostate gland and it is connected with the pubis, with the pubis by pubo-prosthetic ligaments. Then the three surfaces. Upper surface related to small intestine, okay, and then two inferior lateral surfaces will describe them later. Okay, this is the base of the urinary bladder in the male. The upper part of the base is related to the rectovesical pouch. The lower part of the base is related to the seminal vesicles and vasa differentia. This is one vas difference and this is the other vas difference. Regarding the relations in the female, this is the uterus, okay, fundus, body, and cervix, and this is the vagina. So, start by the apex. The apex is similar to that of the male. This apex is connected with the umbilicus by the median umbilical ligament. 
which is the obliterated urecus, and the apex lies behind the upper border of the pubic symphysis. The base of the urinary bladder in the female is related to the vagina and the cervix of the uterus. Okay, the neck of the urinary bladder in the female is continuous with the urethra, and then the upper surface is related to small intestine in this pouch, which is the uterovesical pouch. Then the three surfaces, upper surface and two inferior lateral surfaces. This is the inferior lateral surface. It is divided into three zones. The anterior part, this is the anterior part, is related to the retropubic bed of fat, retropubic fat. Then the posterior part is related to two muscles. The upper part is related to optiurator internus, and the lower part is related to levator in eye. So the inferior lateral surface, the anterior part is related to the retro pubic fat, and the posterior part is related to optiurator internus above and the levator in eye below. This is the trigon of the urinary bladder. The trigon of the urinary bladder is triangular area on the inner surface of the base. The base of the trigon is formed by the interureteric ridge. This is the interureteric ridge between the two ureteric orifices. The apex of the trigon is the internal urethral orifice. The mucous membrane of the trigon, as you see, is smooth due to the great elasticity of the trigon. Regarding the arterial supply of the urinary bladder, the urinary bladder is supplied by vesical arteries. This is the internal iliac artery. The internal iliac artery gives two branches, umbilical artery and the inferior vesical artery. So we have three arteries, two in the male and the two in the female. Okay, superior vesical artery, this superior vesical artery in males and in females, and then inferior vesical artery in the male, and vaginal artery in the female. Superior vesical artery, okay, is a branch from the umbilical artery. Inferior vesical artery is a branch from the internal iliac artery, and the vaginal artery is a branch from the internal iliac artery. Just reminding you of the distribution of the inferior vesical artery. This inferior vesical artery in the male, it supplies the urinary bladder, it supplies the seminal vesicle, vas deferens, and the prostate. Okay, all these structures are supplied by the inferior vesical artery. So, arterial supply of the urinary bladder in the male, superior vesical artery from the umbilical, inferior vesical artery from the internal iliac. Blood supply of the urinary bladder in the female, superior vesical artery from the umbilical artery, and the vaginal artery from the internal iliac artery. Okay, just let us have a summary on the urinary bladder. Okay, this is the urinary bladder. So, position in an adult and in children. In adult, if it is empty, it lies in the anterior part of the pelvis. If it is full, it will expand upward behind the anterior abdominal wall. Okay, in a children, it is ab it is abdominal organ due to the small size of the pelvis. Then it is the shape is pyramidal in shape. Pyramidal in shape has apex, base, two posterior superior angles, neck, and three surfaces. Peritoneal covering in the male, upper surface and upper part of the base. In the female, upper surface only. And then relations of the urinary bladder, okay, apex, this apex behind the pubic symphysis, okay, and it is connected with the umbilicus by the median umbilical ligament. The base in the male, the upper part in the male is related to the rectovesical pouch, the lower part is related to seminal vesicles and the vasa differentia. Okay, in the female, it is related to the vagina. Then the neck. In the male, it rests on the prostate gland and it is connected with the pubis by the pupoprostatic ligament. In the female, the base of the urinary bladder 
uh, the neck of the urinary bladder in the female is continuous with the urethra and is connected with the pubis by pubovesical ligament. Upper surface, small intestine, okay, and uh, inferior lateral surface related to the anterior part, retropubic fat, the posterior part, obturator internus, and elevator in eye. Arterial supply, three arteries, okay, superior vesical artery in males and females from the umbilical artery, inferior vesical artery in the male and the vaginal artery in the female. Inferior vesical and vaginal are branches from the internal iliac artery. So we finished with the urinary bladder. Let us have a look at the urethra. This is the male urethra. The male urethra is about 20 centimeters long. It is S-shaped. Okay? It is divided into four parts. The first part is called the pre-prosthetic part. This pre-prosthetic part lies between the prostate and the neck of the urinary bladder. And this pre-prosthetic part is surrounded by the internal urethral sphincter. Second part is the prosthetic part. This is the prosthetic part of the urethra. It is the widest part. It lies inside the prostate gland. It receives the opening of ejaculatory ducts and the prosthetic utricle. And this is the third part, membranous part. This membranous part lies in the deep perineal pouch and it is surrounded by the external urethral sphincter. Then the fourth part, this one, is the spongy part. This spongy part lies in the bulb of the penis and in corpus spongiosum. This spongy part has two dilatations. This is the first dilatation, bulbar fossa, and this is the second dilatation, navicular fossa. So bulbar fossa in the bulb and the navicular fossa in the glands. This Spongy part receives the opening of the bulbo urethral glands. So the male urethra is 20 centimeters long. It is a C-shaped structure. Okay, it is divided into four parts: pre-prosthetic part, prosthetic part, membranous part, a spongy part. The pre-prosthetic part between the prostate and the neck of the urinary bladder. It is surrounded by the internal urethral sphincter. Prosthetic part inside the prostate. It is the most, it is the widest part. It receives the opening of prosthetic utricle and the two ejaculatory ducts. Then the membranous part, it lies in the deep perineal pouch and it is surrounded by the external urethral sphincter. This is the spoon. Actually, the membranous part is the shortest, is the narrowest part. Then the spongy part, this is the spongy part, the spongy part in the bulb of the penis and in corpus spongiosum, it has two dilatations, bulbar fossa and the navicular fossa, and it, re it receives the opening of the bulb urethral gland. Okay, so the pre-prosthetic part is the first part, second part is the prosthetic part, and the third part is the membranous part. The pre-prosthetic part is surrounded by the internal urethral sphincter. The prosthetic part receives the opening of, okay? So the pre-prosthetic part is surrounded by the internal urethral sphincter. The prosthetic part, of course, receives the opening of the ducts of the prostate glands, okay? And it receives the opening of prosthetic utricle in the middle and ejaculatory ducts. It has elevation called the seminal colliculus. This elevation in the posterior wall of the prosthetic urethra called the seminal colliculus. And the third part is the membranous part. It is surrounded by the external urethral sphincter. So actually, the urethra has two sphincters, internal urethral sphincter and the external urethral sphincter. So let us have a comparison between the three parts of the urethra prosthetic, membranous, and the spongy. Start by the length of each part. Prosthetic part is one inch. Membranous part is half an inch. And the spongy part is six inches long. The prosthetic part lies in the prostate. 
membrana part in the deep perineal pouch, a spongy part in the bulb of the penis and the corpus spongiosum. The prosthetic part is the widest part. The membrana part is the narrowest part. The spongy part has two dilatations, bulbar fossa in the bulb, navicular fossa in the glands. The prosthetic part receives the openings of ejaculatory ducts and the prosthetic utricle. Membrana part is surrounded by external urethral sphincter and the spongy part receives the openings of bulbo-urethral glands. Urethral sphincters are two. Internal urethral sphincter and the external urethral sphincter. Where is each one? Internal urethral sphincter lies between the neck of the urinary bladder and the prostate. The external urethral sphincter, it lies in the deep perineal pouch. The internal urethral sphincter surrounds the preprostatic part. The external urethral sphincter surrounds the membranous part. The internal urethral sphincter is formed of smooth muscles, so it is supplied by autonomic nerves. The external urethral sphincter is formed by skeletal muscle fibers, so it is supplied by somatic nerve, which is the pudendal nerve. What is the function of each one? Internal urethral sphincter is involuntary sphincter for the urinary bladder, actually for the bladder neck. External urethral sphincter is voluntary sphincter for the urethra. So we have internal sphincter and external sphincter. Internal sphincter between the neck of the bladder and the urethra. External sphincter in the deep perineal pouch. Internal sphincter surrounds the preprosthetic part. External sphincter surrounds the membranous part. Internal sphincter is formed of smooth muscle fibers. That's why it is supplied by autonomic nerves. External sphincter is formed of skeletal muscle fibers. That's why it is supplied by the pudendal nerve. Uh, the internal sphincter is involuntary sphincter for the, for the urinary bladder. The external sphincter is voluntary sphincter for the urethra. Then the male, the female urethra. This is the female urethra embedded in the anterior roll of the vagina. Actually, the female urethra is four centimeters long. Okay. It is related to the anterior roll of the vagina. And it opens in the vestibule. This is the vestibule. So this is the urethral orifice opens in the vestibule. Four centimeters embedded in the anterior roll of the vagina. And also it is surrounded by external anal external urethral sphincter, external urethral sphincter in the deep perineal pouch. And thank you very much, best wishes and good luck and see you later.